Welcome to this special episode of Gate 7 International by the fans, for the fans. My name's Costa. I'm joined by Costa with a K. Costa, how's it going, man? It's going great. I'm very excited. I'm not going to say anymore because I just want to get this amazing interview uh, going. It's, it's huge. This is huge. Okay. Ladies and gents, there's not foot. I mean, there's no Olympiacos football going on right now. There is a World Cup that you might be watching or you might not be watching. Uh, but we have lined up a great interview for you today. We've been trying to get this one for a very long time and I'm uh, I'm flabbergasted. I'm so happy that we have joining with us today, Jose Colevas. Here he is, the man, the legend. Jose, welcome. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you, my friend? Thank you so much again for joining us. No problem. I'm good. You guys? Now we're perfect. <laughs> Jose, keep firing, we're gonna keep firing. We're, we're gonna dive straight into things, but I mean, I imagine most Olympiacos fans know who you are. But what I'm gonna I do is so. <laughs> what, what I'm gonna do is just run through your remarkable career um just looking at this again and, and run through the history so jose Rolevas is born in germany to a greek father and a german-american mother he's made close to 500 appearances as a professional footballer 173 appearances with olympiacos 124 in the premier league with watford a stint with roma in Serie A five Greek championships, two Greek cups, 38 international caps with the Greek national team, including participation in Euro 2012 and World Cup 2014 in Brazil, where Greece went out to Costa Rica on penalties. And at that tournament, Roberto Carlos, one of the best left backs to ever play the game, called him the best left back in the competition. Uh, that's a long list of accolades already for a man that started playing in the lower leagues in Germany. Uh, I I understand you, at, at, at a moment in time, you quit your aspirations to become a footballer early on in your career so that you could provide for your family. I found yourself working in a microchip factory and then, you know, things, things got started again. But listening to all of that, Jose, like, how, do you, how do you look back on your career? Where do I start? It's, it's a sick one, I have to say. It's a sick one, uh, especially when you see how it started with me. I was very late. Everyone was already in the team where they started younger age. And I was like, fuck. Um, I was good as well. And I basically throw it away because of friends, uh, stupid people around me and everything. And that was like the time when I was getting my baby as well. And then I was completely turning around. I said, I cannot go on like that and changed everything. But things didn't go well for me when I was a young father. And then I said, okay, look, listen, um, what can I do? I put everything on one card. If it works, it works. If not, I tried it. Nothing happened. So yeah, like this, it basically started when I was starting with friends, playing football again. After one and a half year, I was stopping and my uncle was kicking me in my ass, let's say. I said, you cannot stop football, you idiot. He said basically like that. And I was saying, okay, but... There's no motivation for me right now. He said, listen to me, start there and try to find your way, he said. And that's what I did in the end. And from all the way down, all the way up, it was it was really roller coaster, let's say. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jose, I mean, I, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I got to say, when we, when we put the story of your interview up on Instagram, one of my former colleagues from the Independent, Teddy Cutler, an award-winning journalist, he described you as one of the most underrated players in Premier League history. And I could not agree more with that. 
and uh, and it's been quite a great, an amazing career. And you joined Olympiacos in 2010 from 1860 Munich, thanks to former yes. manager Ewald Linden. And what was his greatest exactly. contribution to the club? How did your move take place exactly? Oh, it was, it was, oh my God, it was really strange, I have to say, because I had already uh, offers as well from other clubs in the Bundesliga. Because I was not more like a, and I still was like this, uh, also in the end of my career, during the career, I, I was more the, the team player. I was not looking just for my ass on the pitch. That's what the most are doing on the pitch. And I don't like that. And that's why I was getting always in fights with some people in the team. And anyway, so I was going from 86 minutes to Olympiacos by a call and from Ewald Linen. And he said to listen, try to get me out in uh, 60 Munich by himself uh, to go to Olympiacos, Ewald Linen. And he had to make a deal to take one player with him over there and so it was arranged like that because i was signing with the old president oh, the new one exactly i think the new one didn't even knew me my Nakis. so i think it was already but during that time i was young and i was not focusing on that but after now i'm older and i know a lot of things i think it was already on a on a, how can I say it, mm, with Ewald Linen that he was already uh, knocked uh, on that day when the when the president changed and everything. So it, they just waited for the time to put him out. And that's happened then in, in uh, where was it, Tel Aviv? Mm -hmm. When we lost, yeah. absolute strange game, strange pitch was so hot and and oh my god and we lost it now and then we get out didn't play in the europe as well it was it was a strange year then for me but i was saying okay it's just the coach the coach is come and goes it's like that in the business so i have to deal with that and i didn't uh, really went backwards and i said oh my god now the coach is gone it's just the coach it's up to me what I'm doing there. And that's what I did then. That's what I can say about the move. Can, can I well, ask I'm... you just like quick, quick follow up question, Costa? Um, you said you had Bundesliga offers. Like, what, yeah. what, what drew you to Greece? I mean, obviously, the manager, you knew him, but like, was it, you know, you have a Greek connection in your family as well? Did that, did that also play a role? Like, was it like, an opportunity for you to go and explore as well like how did that play a role it was a big role as well because first of all okay i was just playing second bundesliga in germany because everyone wants to go in the in the first division bundesliga but i was saying like okay my father is greek i know a lot of people in greece from my father's side and that's the biggest club in greece so why should I not take that opportunity and try to start my career there? And if it doesn't work, I can go backwards again. So I said, okay, again, the cards, I put everything on one card and I went there. I mean, I went alone there, first of all, after my wife came and yeah, nothing really changed for me. I just did my thing, what I had to do and try to be better than the other ones. I mean, like I had Raul Bravo in front of me. <laughs> but in that time, I think he didn't have a really good run. Even when Valverde came after, he put everything on me. Mm -hmm. So that's what's saying something to me. And I had to say, OK, he's giving me the chance. I have to give it back. That's what I was trying to do <clears throat> at that time. I mean, indeed, you touched on it. Evald Linden's time at Olympiacos was short-lived and he was replaced by one of the greatest managers in Olympiacos history, Ernesto yes. Valverde. What, and you touched on, on Valverde giving you a lot of responsibility. What kind of influence did Valverde have on your career? He had a lot. Uh, I learned 
a lot under him, even under his stuff and and this and things like the athletic stuff and all this stuff. But basically, it was more like with me it was more like the tactic stuff and everything. What I really, really was learning about it under him, as you said, is a great manager. That's what I can only agree with and just say it was my best coach in my career that's what i have to say next one is i don't know if everyone likes him i don't care it's santos absolute great manager we all like him we'll talk about him later okay <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but you also worked under current manager, Mitzel, and under him, you enjoyed some famous victories, but none of them surpassed that Manchester United game at the Yorios Karaiskaiki Stadium. How did you remember that amazing 2-0 victory? Yeah, we had a good run under him. Really good run. As I said, he's also a, a good manager. He, he, he tries to speak into the team. That's what I know, basically when he came and i wanted to leave um it was a strange strange season then for me because i wanted to leave they didn't want me to let it go and, and brought a new player in bong yeah. and after wanted me to leave and i said no no i'm not leaving you made me hell on earth on that transfer now i'm gonna stay and I'm going to say, you, you spend money on this guy for nothing because he will not play. That's what I said to Frenzos. I don't know if he's watching it. <laughs> That's what I told him. I said, I will give you hell on earth. But at this game, I think everything was working. Everything was really focusing on this game. And that's what I say all the time. If you're really interested and you're not scared about anyone, you can win some games. Maybe it doesn't work, but you try it and maybe you lose 1-0 instead of not trying and lose 5-0. I think that's even worse then. And that's what we did and, and it worked really well for us. We, we won the game 2-0, but yeah, some players I think couldn't handle it in the next game. And then we lost 3-0. What was for me absolute? Uh, I was, I, I think I was for one week. You didn't, you couldn't speak for me. No chance. I was really sad. Yeah. Um, absolutely. You've gone from an epic victory like that at home, 2 0, to just a massive cold shower at Old Trafford. Uh, David De Gea stopping absolutely everything. And Van Persie scoring absolutely everything on the other end. Um, yeah, okay, I, amazing. It wasn't amazing. The free kick. Uh, I mean, like, I don't know what, what what happened to Roberto at that moment. What he was thinking. It was his corner. There is no excuses for that. I mean, everyone knows it. I think everyone still speaks about it. That, yeah, I'm yeah. not putting it. I don't blame him that we lost the game, but. In that situation, it was like the game changing. And that was then, oh, everyone was like, oh, 2-0 for us. Now they score. Mm, now we have to be. And some were scared after. You could feel it. That's what I was feeling in the game. And I was trying to do something to, to get the level up in the head. But it didn't work. That's football. Sometimes it works, sometimes not. Can I ask you a tactical question? I mean, about that game, because there were some stories and some rumours that have gone around for years about, you know, what happened and what was the game plan? I mean, you're obviously going into that game 2-0 up and you're thinking, OK, what do we do? Do we go out there and we, you know, defend and wait for a counter-attack and try and nick a goal? Or do you go out there and play like you play any other game? There were some rumours that Mitchell has this reputation of a being a really good man manager like you said he he gets into the players heads he tries to get inside them and there was this rumor going around that victor sanchez the assistant he had a really important role in terms of defining the tactics on the pitch and the game plan the analysis etc there was a rumor that the two of them had a disagreement on the approach 
for the game. Is there any truth to that? Like, what what more could can you say about that? That's a that's that's a thing. I I can't say nothing about it because they're not speaking about that with the players. If they got a disagree on the day stuff, they they're not letting the players know that. They just do the thing. But I I heard also some things. But you you could also see it that they were not like this together anymore. Really, okay. you could see that. And but no one didn't know what, what was going on. Wrong time for that, but it happens. And yeah, but he was the first coach, so yeah. for me, he had the saying and. He have to follow that. Otherwise, go and do your own thing. Do your first uh, head coach and and do yourself. Uh, I mean, that's the thing for assistants. You have to listen to the coach. But as I said, I don't really know what happened over there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but obviously, Mitzel's first stint with Olympiacos was very successful, and uh, you were part of most of all the successes of Mitzel because Mitzel left the season after you went to Roma. How did you find working under Mitzel? And do you think he's the right man to help help Olympiacos rebuild and regain the recent success in Greece and Europe? That's the point. Everyone thinks everyone, and I'm 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 absolutely not thinking like this. It's up to the coach all the time. That's not working. It's it's the players. It's absolutely the players. If they don't want, they don't want. You can't change it. It's impossible. And what I can see right now, I, I haven't watched any games, to be honest. I wanted to go. I was invited by a friend of mine for the Freiburg game. I said, no, I'm not going. There's no point for me because that's, that's not my team. I said it straight away. I'm not going. Because what they're showing now, is, for me, is ridiculous. It's absolute ridiculous. I have to say, I'm, I'm firing now. I don't care. It's, you can't get out. For, no, you can't get out from, from the Champions League. I don't know who was it. It was as Maccabi well. Haifa. Yeah, Maccabi Haifa. You play, I don't know, 4-0 you lost at home? Yeah. Yes. Yes. They would have killed us when I was there. You can't lose like this to Maccabi Haifa, my friend. Hey, sometimes it can happen something. 1-0, 2-1, last minute score, but not a clear 4-0. Olympiacos is a is a is a is a club for the Champions League. It always been. And now you go to Europa League and, and, and even this game, <laughs> you lost by penalty. So there you see already how weak was the team already. Yeah. And then you bring in, okay, Rodriguez and, and Marcelo. For what? What, what is the, I never understand this. Great players. No doubt. Great players. World Cup, he destroyed us. Marcelo, great career. But why you bring these guys in? Tell me, for which reason? The other guy, they don't want him somewhere. Rodriguez and Marcelo is finished with his career. And he doesn't show now anything. What I can see and read and all this stuff in media. So there's, I don't know, weak mentality maybe in the in the locker room. That's what happened with us as well when i was there my last year and they wanted me to continue and i said no i will not continue because it doesn't change anything it's even worse now when i was here and who was the sports director lena suluko yeah i think she left now as well yeah yes she has or got uh, or got kicked i don't know and I said straight away to her, you have no clue about football. I'm not talking with you. Even when I was came to finish my career, I didn't watch for the money, but she changed even my contract without telling me. I was like, what's going on over here? You don't have to impress the president. He knows me more than you. So what's going on here? 
and there I was thinking, okay, let's see how it works. And I was seeing already in the locker room that it's quite weak, very weak mentality. And I think they still got that. There's not really hunger in that team to win something. And that's what you can see right now. Uh, before we transition to the to the to the World Cup, I have to ask this uh, follow up question, Jose. Because I mean, as you said, uh, as you said, like this has been a terrible summer. Uh, th- two managers were sacked. Mitzel is the second, is the third. Uh, Olympiacos crashed out of Europe, barely made it in the Europa League, didn't win a single game. They're fourth now in the league. The roster is inflated. There's like four left backs right now and like four number tens. Uh, <laughs> players who arrived the summer signings left on loan, like Philip Zinkernagel, a good player. How do you turn this around? How can Olympiacos turn this around and regain <clears throat> the success they had when you were playing? No, we had like, when it didn't work out for us, we had like really team meetings and everyone was trying to speak into it now. I don't know if they do it like this in this way or if you have players really who open their mouth. I don't know if they have this right now, um, but that's what they have to really, really change. They have to get some rules in there because um, I'm, I'm using my social media as well. Okay, no problem. But hey, my friend, I have seen so many young players before the game, even if it's an important game, being on Instagram, watching bullshit, putting videos themselves in front of the game. I mean, that's... That's not focusing on the game for me. Then you have the, the coach who say, ah, okay, everyone is acting different on the game and stuff. No, absolutely not. In front of the game, put your fucking phone away and leave it somewhere else and focus on the game. After the game, you can do whatever the fuck you want. And I was like, I was really pissed with that already. But the new generations are like this now. I don't know why. Where are they taking this from? Problem, the club, they give them too much space. Even in England, younger players getting so much money in a, in, in a young age. They don't have respect anymore for, for older players. If they tell them something, like, uh, what the fuck do you want from me? Blah, blah, blah. If I did this in my age, oh my God, I would get slapped the fuck out of me. <laughs> That's for sure. We was cleaning the boots from the older ones. Yeah, this is the youth is doing this now. Yeah. In my time, the younger players from the first team had to do that. Yeah, no, you don't see that. <laughs> you don't see that. And that's a, that's for me a problem from from the the club then, because they give too many players too much space. If you got some players who have space, okay, captains, I don't know, something like this, but. The rest, no. No, absolutely not. And I think also this is 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 a problem in Olympiacos right now. Wrong players for me, I have to say it's absolute. Mm-hmm. It's very it's very interesting, this Jose. And uh, I mean you were obviously uh you not only you were you part of a successful Olympiacos squad, you were also part of the I think we can, Costa, we can say this, the last successful Greece national team with some huge names and huge personalities. And you were part of the most famous World Cup campaign in 2014. What kind of memory? straight in this. I cut you now. Mm -hmm. Because if you want, you can bring Mitoglu one day in. You're going to tell you the same. We'd love to. I said it after 2014. I said, when Santos left them, I said, you're not going anywhere now. When I see all the younger players, what they bring in, other players into the national team, and still some players to the national team who were not playing in their club. I've never seen this. Player who's not playing in the club doesn't go for me into the national team because I don't know where he's standing. It can happen one time when he's been there and he doesn't play in the club. Okay, no problem. I bring him again because I know him. But if he doesn't play for, I don't know, three, four, five, six weeks, one, two months, I don't bring him here. And that's the reason why I'm stopped. 
Jose reminds me, like, because I I went to Brazil. I I was at the Costa Rica game. Yeah. Uh, I I've followed the national team. I've I've been lucky enough in my life to go to Portugal in 2004 for the France game. Uh, the the final. I was at the final too. So you know, as a as a Greek, you will never live that ever again in our lifetime. Maybe never ever ever again. Yeah, but. That 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 tournament. I mean, we should have won that Costa Rica game. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think if Mitroglou was fit that season, and never went to Fulham, and yeah. never went to Fulham. Yeah, but he had he had the knee injury against PSG, yeah. and I mean, yeah, he did. Mitroglou yeah, was one of quiet. the best. Mitroglou was one of the best strikers in Europe for me that season. It's like he was. I, he was. Honestly. He, for me, he's like the Greek Karim Benzema. Like he has, every, he had everything: like strength, technique, finishing, good with his left foot, right foot, head, everything. Just like <laughs> before I go to to Costa Rica and the national team, just can you tell me about, tell us about Mitroglou? Because he's disappeared. Like the last year, he he was at Aris. He signed for Aris from Marseille, yeah. but he never played. He's he hasn't got a club now, and it's like, what yeah. what, what happened to Costa? That's 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 the things with transfers though when he started went to fulham <laughs> he had uh, he had uh, how can i say it's uh, the coach of fulham i don't know if you know who was it was the united uh he was it was assistant for alex ferguson Mühlenstein. it was mullenstein it was mullenstein before magat yeah. uh replaced him exactly african <sighs> magat exactly yeah, yeah. and england as a striker, and Costa for me is a is a is a box striker, absolute box striker. He's not a striker who moves on the fucking wing and run his ass off over there. He's in the middle, but if you bring that crosses in, he's gone or not. But he will touch the ball or sometimes or not. But he will be there. Outside. Costa is not usable, and that's what was the problem, I think, for his transfer. Because Fulham played like this as well, especially in England, they play a lot like this. Strikers come and then go deep and stuff. That's not that's not Costa. That's why I didn't understand the transfer at all. Mm-hmm. After he went to Marseille, okay, he, he scored some goals, but I think it didn't went so well for him over there. And after that, yeah, I lost a little bit of contact with him as well. And then I heard about Aris that he's going to Aris. And I was like, what are you doing there? <laughs> okay, so it happened. But now what he's doing, I can't tell you. I really can't tell you. I mean, Costas was such a, a special player. And he was the main reason Greece made it to the 2014 World Cup finals. And I got to ask you, all, Jose, because... I mean, Greece's greatest match in the world in world in the World Cup has always been that Ivory Coast game when we we got that penalty at the end and Samaras fired us to the last sixteen. How do you remember that game? What kind of memories do you have from that from that game? Oh, it was it was oh, I mean, like everyone knows, we we didn't start well, huh? Mm. We lost three zero. Yeah, Colombia first game against Colombia, but. What I can say, I think they changed the game time after that. Because we was playing at, I don't know, one o'clock. Mm-hmm. I think something like this. Do you know how hot this was? I was two minutes on the pitch. I thought I finished already a whole game. And I was watching the clock. It said three minutes. And I was like, holy shit. I was dead already. And after when we played Japan, and we played 1-1 one, one and Katsuanis, I think, was it? Yellow uh, red card. Yeah. We played with 10 men down and played 1-1. One, one. It was even tough as well then. 0-0, zero, right zero, Japan. Oh, uh, zero, 0-0, zero, yeah. was it? Yeah. And then <laughs> after the Ivory Coast, it was the last game, so we had to do something. And I think we showed it that we want to go through this. It was a... Yeah, it, can't describe it in words. It was really special at this time. Really special. You go through and then then you get Costa Rica as well. And I was like, okay, come on. We're going to do this. Let's do it. 
Just let let's just do it. Don't think about it. Just do it. That's what what, 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 I, what I was saying about it, and the coach was saying as well. We can't do that, and we were showing it, and then we get this fucking stupid ass, shitty ass goal. I don't know if it was a pass or something. It wasn't even a shot. The ball was rolling into the goal. I don't know who was it. Brian Ruiz. Yes, exactly. It was a yeah, it was a shit goal what we conceded. But then in the penalty, I have to be honest again, really honest again. Costa was saying to me when Gekas was going there, he said he will not score. I, he I said was to never... me, he's scared. He said to I... me, he's scared. I see this. <laughs> I was behind the goal. Happened. I was behind the goal. Like, I don't oh. know, man. Like, I mean, okay. I think I think he it struck was a good it. Shot. it was he struck it well. It was not he struck it well. Yeah. But you got, got but the goal not... goal. Yeah, but he shot it really hard. Not, not really in the corner, but it was a good shot and and up. But I think the goalkeeper was gambling. And he took the right corner because it was really a hard shot. If you watch that penalty again, it was yeah. a hard shot. I gotta, I gotta ask you now, what, what the hell happened like after that game, Costa Rica? Because again, like it was a whole media circus. Like there was a lot of talk about Santos kind of walking out, and like, I mean, I mean, I think you kind of alluded to it already that for many players they knew it was like it's the end of an era there's going to be a new cycle but like why why did santos walk out like do you have any any clue like what was what was going on after that game i i can i can't tell you about that but well from my side what i can say i was frustrated as well really really frustrated because you're going into a preseason, flying so far away, and then you, okay, penalty is 50-50, but you lose it to a penalty, and and it wasn't now Germany or, or I don't know, you know, it was Costa Rica. They had a good game, a good run in that tournament as well, yeah. but we should have win this game uh, by penalty, okay. As I said, it's 50-50, and in the end, we were the loser. So it was very quiet also in the locker room. No one was speaking. I think it was the best way that everyone was shutting up because I don't know what what, what happened if someone was speaking. Everything yeah. can happen. So Santos, I think he left as well quiet because I think he was also sad as well mad it was a it was a strange game i don't know in what kind of direction it could go so in the end i think the the draw were all right but when you lose to a penalty it's 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 hard that's what i can say it's really hard it is indeed and um, since we are in the world cup fever and there's a lot of people who uh, watching us from England, and they, there's one thing the English uh, are scared more of, and the, there's nothing the English are scared more of in the World Cup, and that's penalties. So I got to ask you, you scored a penalty against a very informed Keylor Navas. He was amazing yes. in this game. What was going through yeah. your mind while you were setting the ball up and you were ready to take the, um, take the shot? Nothing. <laughs> the best thing? Nothing. Nothing. I just go there on the point, set my ball up, watch the goalkeeper, choose my corner, and go through it. That's it. If you're thinking, oh, where is he moving? Where is he? Finish. One out of 10, it goes inside. I'm telling you. Perfect. If you start thinking, it's finished. It's, it's finished. It's penalty, you don't think. You can see as a player with a lot of people in the stadium, everyone say, ah, come on. Ball is small. Ball is big. The as soon as you arrive there at the point, the goal is getting so small. I'm telling you, it gets so small. And when the goalkeeper is standing like that, then 
you really can see the difference after on the pitch. It's, it's, that's why I'm not thinking. I'm just going through and put that ball in, finish. How, how heavy are your legs after 120 minutes of football and then the stress and the anxiety as you're walking up? I mean, I've... I've played semi-professional football in, in Belgium and I used to take set pieces and penalties for my team. Every time I took a penalty, like I had to really compose myself. Like my legs, not shaking, but like you feel like, I feel like there are rocks in the back of my legs before I take so a penalty. Means, that means you're not fit. Okay. <laughs> There's a little, maybe a little bit of that too. But you asked anyway, for it, Costa. You asked for I'm it, Costa. Play, I'm playing at that <laughs> level, but like, yeah. Yeah. Um, Fair, fair you're enough. not fit, my friend. You're not fit. No, nah, I mean, definitely yeah, not fit after, anymore. after 90 minutes, the next 30 minutes is hard, especially on that level up. It's hard. I mean, like you play all this time in your team, the whole season, your teammates going to holidays, you're going to World Cup or Europe. It's nice, but the rest time for me is is too short maybe you've got some players they they play i don't know especially in england you, you play so many games i don't know if you're in all competitions in the cup in the league in, in the champions league or whatever i mean like you, you you arrive at 50 games yeah that's that's a lot that's why some teams are switching the players to to rest them but if you have your basic team uh, and you go all the time through it of course you do your rest training you, you don't train as hard like the others but that's the other part of it but it, it, it's quite hard in the last 30 minutes then especially in in, in the national team whew, that's what i was thinking sometimes uh, and especially on, on on my position you always got them them quick small guys and you have to fight your ass off with them Okay, in the end, it wasn't wasn't really a problem for me. In the beginning, it was because, you know, especially in the national team, we, we we didn't been so close together. After it went step by step, a little bit more close, and everyone was helping each other. In my first games, I I was feeling like uh, I played five against one on my side, and I was like, what the hell is going on over here? And I was speaking then after, and then it was going better and better. Of course, we had also some stupid ass games where we was losing. Uh, uh, I was sometimes I was really mad, uh, really mad. Well, um, we're gonna go to some more lighter questions uh, from lighter. Yeah, some of the some fan questions that we received, Jose, that we'd like to put to you. And the first Let's one I go. want to ask you is, do you remember your favorite goal at Olympiacos? Can you tell us what that would be? And if you can't, I'll tell you what, we made a video for you so that you, you can oh, have a look. Shit. You can have a look at some of these goals. <laughs> favorite one. Us. Favorite one, first of all, Boris. Because... Again? Wait. I really... Fuck my friends with this because they are they are fans of them. Dortmund, oh, oh okay. winning, yeah. Oh yes, can I scratch the header? Uh, they, my friends were killing me on the phone. I had so many messages, <laughs> especially you know, my cousin. He's also he's a big fanatic Dortmund fan. Oh my cousin, holy shit! He was destroying me on the phone, <laughs> and. You know, Next, next one was Ike. Okay. All right. Interesting. The, the, the special, the special six zero. Six nil. Yeah. Yeah. Got a sky Let game. me, let me, let me play the video. Let me play the video. <laughs>
So if I have to pick this from this, I would take Offi or the corner. Bangers, mate. That, that free, you did that free kick that as well. Free kick. That free kick, how hard did you hit that one? My God. <laughs> oh, there I was hitting hard a little bit. Holy shit. That was a hard one, yes. And I was aiming for the corner. But the ball was like... Uh, it just went... Kick. The keeper... <laughs> yeah, no a little bit. If the keeper touched that, he'd go in with the ball, probably. That You hit yeah. it that hard. Maybe, maybe yeah. not. We, we don't find out. <laughs> no, exactly. It doesn't matter. But anyway, no, I, I hope you like that trip down memory lane. Um, the next question we got, um, we, we always get this question from fans. They always want to hear like a funny story from the locker room or from the training ground. Like, is there is there like a story? I mean, you've probably got hundreds, but like one funny story from the Olympiacos locker room or the training ground, if you'd like to share something with the fans. Pa. There's no chance with me because most of the time everyone was already gone <laughs> and I was in the gym. Uh, hotel lobbies or some stuff like this, I can't tell you as, as well known because I was always in my room alone. So funny stories in Olympiacos. I can't tell you. Or anywhere. I really can't tell you. The only the only funny thing was, was for me was like Modesto when he was uh, but this was on the pitch when he took the he took the pants off <laughs> from the guy. <laughs> was that, yeah. yeah. That, that was that was Ike. Oaka. Was it Ike? Oaka thought it was against Ike at Oaka, but I I cannot remember the player who did that to Modesto. I, I don't, Modesto. I, I don't I, as well not. <laughs> but he took <gasps> his pants off. <laughs> I was, I was like, I was laughing inside, but I couldn't show it. I was like, what is he doing there? <laughs> Holy shit. God damn it. I think there is some more, but I had to really think. But I can't All good. Now. That's all right. I'm going to send no. you a video after. <laughs> yep. If if you do if you do if you do say if you do record a video please do send that to us that would be great. If I find something, I'll let you know if I find something. All oh, right, oh wicked, wicked. Uh, um, the fans were also asking why you left, but you already answered that question for me. Um, yeah, I can answer to it straight away again if you want. No, it's okay. You already you already mentioned. I mean, uh, if you have anything to add, that is, if you have anything to add, if I would edit. The thing is, I left because, of course, they brought the younger guy. Uh, Can I ask you I about how, him? How, how you say this? Oleg Reapchuk. Yeah. They wanted me to stay uh, as, a, as the player behind. And I said, that does, that's not working. I don't care how old I am. I, I I want to be on that pitch if I'm in the team. If the guy is better than me, okay, no problem. I take it. But I will come back because I'm not giving him breath. Yeah. I give him no break because I want to be on that pitch as well. And I said, this is not working. And the next thing is also, I didn't like when I was my last year over there, the whole mentality and structure of the of the club inside if something was there really what was annoying me a lot as i said right now what is going on with the team the 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 the, the, the team spirit and everything is like it's too low for me especially for me it was really too low and i was saying also i felt it during the season when i was there that the team is weak. Mm -hmm. Even when was Martin's there, he was speaking a lot with me, and, and I was saying him as well this that the mentality of the team is very very low, and that's the problem right now. What you can see, some players left, some stayed. I got some players what I don't like, but I will not tell them now. And 
yeah, that's why I said also to to Lina because they said to me they want to continue with me, and I said no. For me, it's finished now. I would love to do it, but not under this uh, how do you say construction. Yeah, how yeah. how is it now? Because for me, to be very honest, it looks for me like try to find something and get him away by money. And that's what I what I can see right now, what's going on. I mean, like you've got players there, I don't even know them. What they brought in now. Yeah. And you don't have really fighters there. You don't have it right now. Mm-hmm. That's what really missing. Every team needs a fighter. Even I mean, I was also not the technically gifted player up here. But at least I tried something with it, what I can do. And some players doing our things right now as well, I think, in the team. What they should not do. And they're not helping each other. And everyone knows better. Oh, what do you want? Why you don't do this like that? And why you don't? The communication, it starts there. And I think that's the that's also the main problem this season over there. If Mitzel can fix this, yeah, we'll then see. maybe it works out because how much points is it? 12? 12, yeah. 12 points. 12 points, huh? Yeah. That's quite a lot, huh? Wow. It's okay, a lot. Let's, let's see. I don't know if Panathinaikos is staying stable like that. Well, because I think they haven't lost any game right now. Huh? No, no, they're undefeated. Only one draw, and that was against Olympiacos. Uh, Costa, uh, is it okay for me to move to the next question, or do we have more fan questions? Yep. Um, let's go. Few- Few more, few more fan questions that I want to tackle uh, okay. before we before we move on. Um, best teammate you ever had in your career? Holy shit! <laughs> you could name more than one. I mean, to be fair, you've played with some pretty good, bloody good players. At Watford. It was uh, Mayapa. Mayapa, the centre back. Yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. He's a guy. He he would play until fifty if he can, <laughs> but he cannot. Uh, yeah, that's one. In in Roma, it was. Uh, I still have some contact with him, Nangolan. Mm-hmm. Because he's also a little bit stupid like me. I have to say, stupid crazy. And then I can say it like that. Olympiacos. Oh. Yeah, I like I like Papi. She say. Mm-hmm. I understand uh, him quite well. Gave him a few tips. Uh, Yusef, quite funny. Mm-hmm. That was like, yeah, some of them. You played with Kevin too, didn't you? Down the left. Miralas. Oh, shit. The diva. <laughs> the diva. <laughs> the diva. He's a diva. Holy fuck, eh? I always said to him, eh, come down, eh? Come down, or I will, I will cut you, eh, my friend? <laughs> Don't act like this here, stupid. Eh? That What's was the deep? move when he when he went to Everton. Uh, Everton. Yeah. Yeah, but it didn't work out for him as well. Huh? That's the thing. England is more tough. Yeah. You have to be physically fucking on top stage. You have to be in shape there. If you run out of gas, you're done there. And the coaches, they see this as well. And then, bye-bye, my friend. (laughs) (laughs) Costa, if you have any other questions, like, go ahead. And I can come back to fan questions and we can wrap up with um, quick fire rounds. I think that's my. I think that's the final question I got in terms of you know the questions I have to ask. I just want to make get this thing 
clear. Basically, you have Pedro Martins, who leads Olympiacos to their biggest victory ever at the Emirates against Arsenal, that 2-1 victory that sends them to the last 16 of the Europa League. And then it all just capitulates after that. Everybody thought this is the beginning of something great. It was the exact opposite. Uh, but the way I understand it from you, Jose, is that this is, that wasn't Pedro Martins' fault. That was more about the players that came in and more about the structure of the club. Am I so am I correct to assume that it wasn't Pedro Martins's fault? Uh, th- this situation right now is not down to Pedro Martins. It's something down yeah, to... The, the, the thing is, I, I, we can speak about this now for ages if we want. Uh, it will never stop because I don't know what kind of advice or game tactics, strategy he gave the players on the pitch in front of the game. How to 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 act on the pitch? That's that's the most important for 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 the players on the pitch. I don't know if he did it he did it well when I was there. He did it quite good, I have to say. But as you said as well, is is also up to the players how mm-hmm. some players are handling the situation. Because I can speak about the game easy, but being on the pitch and showing it is a different then you have to show your balls and if he doesn't the coach have to see it but a coach can't change the whole team that's impossible so you have to choose three and most of the time is in the second half and if someone is terrible i don't know he can't really handle it and the coach see it. you put him out after 20 or in half time i don't know but it's quite difficult to say it's just the coach or just the player. Most of the time, it is the players because the coach is not on the pitch. He just can't give you advice, structure, uh, opinions, how to handle something. But in the end, it's up to the player. And there we are at the point again, what I was saying, the quality of some players, I think, is not for Olympiacos. I'm sorry. I can't explain it different. No, but we've um, we appreciate how open and honest and to the point you are on all of this. And we've had some, that's that's why that, I'm in trouble all the time. No, but <laughs> on on this show, on this show as well, we we like to be open and transparent and direct about our views. It's a channel made by the fans for the fans. We mm-hmm. have different opinions, but this is something that we've been talking about, obviously, for a very you know, for a long time now. Since uh, in particular after the Maccabi Haifa game, but even before, you could see the signs. You could see the signs way back, like from from the previous season, yeah. that it was the it cycle was ended. Down, yeah. That's where the it was cycle going. ended after the Wolves game. Mm. After the Wolves game, important players Lots. left. Uh, the manager mm. lost players like Jose Sa, like Pedense, like Guillerme. You know, Timikas, Omar. You know, players that were never replaced fully mm. on the wings. Fully replaced. I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, we we're still looking for a left back, and we're a, still and a right back, for, and a right back. Yeah, <laughs> the, we're playing on the right now. Avila, uh, Jose, uh, uh, Gonzalo Avila Gordon. Uh, he goes by Pipa. He's, he has a nickname of Pipa from Huddersfield. Uh, Doesn't know. know who he is. Oh he my doesn't... day, Huddersfield. Yeah. Yes. They, we signed uh, we signed Sima Versalico from Atletico, Atletico. on a free, but he basically, he basically never played. Uh, played nine games, had, yeah, just not at the level. Like he gave his knees for his national team, and then mm-hmm. we signed him, and then he said, "I'm retiring from international football," and then you just knew it was over. But anyway, um, mm-hmm. this is a discussion that can go on for a very long time, and we're coming to the end. Uh, Jose, you've been with us for. Over over half an hour, which we talked about. Again, really appreciate it. And we're very appreciative. Absolutely appreciative. Uh, Costa, quick fire question, quick fire round. What do you yeah, reckon? Got, got whoa, a few whoa, more. Whoa, 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 whoa. What is fire round? Quick, quick fire round. Before we get to quick fire round, a few more questions from from fans that I want to put to you 
uh, one is actually my question that I I always ask football players. Who's the toughest opponent you ever faced? Is there like one person? Nobody. Nobody. Ribery. Ribery. Ah, Ribery. Ah, Ribery. Wow. That was very quick. That was a very quick answer. That was was that Great was shot. that when, was that what you were when you were playing in the Bundesliga? It was the cup yes. game, and they. Ah, I'm so pissed about it. It wasn't a penalty. It wasn't. Closer <laughs> was jumping. The tackle was outside the 60 meter box just to block the ball, not even really tackle him. Uh, I think it was pa- Pagenburg who did that tackle. And he jumped over him into the 60 meter box, and that was the penalty. And the uh, 118 minutes. That was so Jesus. mad. Jesus. That was so mad. Yeah. And I was playing against Liberty. Holy fuck. At this time, he was so... I mean, you, you don't see this on them, but he was so strong. He was so tough. And I remember he was getting the ball and I was going with all I had against him. He was like a fucking prick wall. Couldn't go on him. On the ball. Sick player. I have to say, sick player. Fantastic. Absolutely. Player. He's, he's still playing, isn't he? Or is he? No, he's, gonna, no, he's retired. retired. He's, he's retired. retired. He's retired. Yeah. He's yeah. retired he's now. Retired. Yeah, he yeah. is. Definitely okay. is. Yeah, okay. he did. Now he's he's up there. Um, last fan question: most underrated teammate you had at Olympiacos? Underrated player, besides yourself. Holy shit, that's a that's a fucking good one, hey. Right now or in the past? No, throughout your Anywhere. career, any yeah, throughout your career. It's really oh, that's a really tough one for me. What I was what I can say right now from the team now. Is the goalkeeper the young boy? Zolakis. Yeah. Yes. Holy fuck! In the past, god damn it! I'm trying that's to a, think of someone a, myself. Uh, that's that's a good one. That's David Foster, the pub, uh, Orbais, a few that come to mind. Um, think- yeah, for um, there, I would I would pick him as well. No one was speaking really about him. He was an absolute team player. Absolute team player. Sorry, who was that? Sorry, Fuster. 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 Oh yeah, absolute. Fuster was an incredible player, legend. He was an absolute team player. He wasn't that strong guy. Not really. He wasn't there. But he went. Also, yep. there, where is the pain? He, he, he didn't care. That's what was I was it, liking on him. Which I can't remember which game he got kicked in the head and scored a yeah, goal. Yeah, exactly. Where he had after the. Uh, yeah. Malme. It was Malme. Yeah, Malme. Yeah. Malme. Yeah. No, he's. Uh, for me. He was a good one. He was Fuster, also underrated. Fuster, one of my favorite players. Yeah, absolutely. One of my favorites. Yeah. You always Very remember good. team players, not single yeah. players. Easy, no, it's true, know. and uh, most of I the think, time it's like that. I think this is a theme that's coming out of our discussion today. Is that um, and if if one would move his ass when I came, top striker. If which he one moved his ass, Diogo. Diogo. Yeah. With the ball, oh my days. But I have to say, I hope he's watching it. Lazy fucker. Yeah, we had... Uh, Absolute lazy. Lazy you, guy. You, you came the season that he left, right? Yeah. yeah. But I yeah. had some training sessions with him as well. Lazy. Yeah. 
we, fit far yeah, as we, well. We, he could do something more if he had a little bit more here. Yeah, I think we this, with this, the this, ball, this, incredible. Oh, yeah. man, I was hating hitting him in training. He just shaked his little ass and then he was gone. Gone. I said, your stuff with my head. Oh, my God. We go Real Madrid, my friend. Um, <laughs> the, season before, the season before you joined and, he, you know, he, his first season in Greece was amazing. Uh, we've talked to some Brazilian, some former Brazilian players in, in Greece that played with him and we talked about him. And it's, yeah, like you said, a little bit in his head and, okay, he has a very particular background and history he you know coming from brazil mm -hmm. alone um i think the, the club yeah. mismanaged that as well uh to yeah, be honest doesn't speak, i think he doesn't speak even english well no I think. yeah 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 he was uh that's also always a, that's that's what i'm saying the language barrier sometimes it's you have to at least speak english if you move out of the country, for me, you have to speak English at least. Yeah, it's like that. Let's let's start to wrap up. So, Jose, quick fire quick round. Fire round. Holy fuck! What we do here is we ask you just like th these are simple questions. Okay, so straight out of the head. Don't be yeah. scared. Just like we're going to ask you some simple questions, and you're going to tell me the the first thing that comes to your head. So, first question I'm going to ask you is, what's your favorite holiday destination? If you could go Dubai. anywhere in the world, if you go anywhere Dubai. in the world right now, give you a ticket. Dubai. You go to Dubai. Dubai. Yeah. Okay. I have some more, but I'm most of the time in Dubai. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dubai. Favorite food and drink. Favorite food and drink. Normal drink or anything. Anything. Me, I like spaghetti bolognese. Mm -hmm. I like that. My specialty. Um, drink most of the time. I choose two. It's like we call it Spezi. Mm -hmm. It's Coca-Cola and Fanta, let's and say, Fanta. together. <laughs> together. But we have a different brand here in Germany called Spezi. It's a little bit different. Yeah. Very good one. It sounds and like alcoholic a is alcoholic is only i drink only hennessy nothing else nice so yeah i don't like the other stuff white one as well oh, no no chance okay uh the last film you watched at the cinema oh, a disaster black adam <laughs> oh which one? Terrible. Black movie. Adam. Black Adam. Black Adam. I nearly <laughs> fall asleep. <laughs> I'm telling Black you. Black Adam. Terrible movie. That was the last movie I've been in cinema. Okay. Uh, last one, Jose. Your favorite Greek word or Greek phrase? Should I say it? <laughs> you can say yeah, whatever you yeah. want. I began with so. I hear this so many. I hear this so many times. They, in every place where I'm going, from everywhere they were screaming. They say, "I was like, what's going on here? Why everyone is so angry over here? Hey, fighting each other all the time and swearing." Everywhere where I've been. Did you hear that a lot on the pitch as well? I imagine. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Did you oh, say it a lot on the pitch? Me as well, yeah. Holy <laughs> fuck! Not only this, sir, my friend, because on the pitch we are not friends, huh? Yeah, yeah. On the pitch we are not friends. I okay with my teammates. I was being normal, huh? But with the other guys, yeah. On the pitch for that ninety minutes, you're not my friend. No, no. <laughs> After that, okay. We're done. Now we are friends again. <laughs> Jose, we've been with you for. For about an hour man and again thank you so much for taking the no time problem. to come on the show uh it's a real honor for us um really appreciated absolutely your... so appreciated to have you jose so thank you so Don't much worry. and thank you for being so All honest good. is Always. there is there like any any message you want to send to fans watching the show like you know now's 
Now, now just to be calm. Yeah. That's all I can say right now. Just to be calm and give the team some time. You know, the team is down now. You can't kick them. It's getting even worse if you do that. Yeah. I know the, the, the emotions and, and how is the football in Greece and how the fans love that game. But sometimes you have to give the team some help, let's say. Even if it's not the season right now, that's what I can say right now. You need to help them. Because I know when when we were playing bad and the fans came over to our training ground, what the what the hell would happen there? I especially remember when we lost 3-0 to Panathinaikos at home. Mm -hmm. After the United game, yeah. Yeah. It was a, whew, they were tripping. They were crazy. Okay, it wasn't that that it was just a game at that time okay but this is a special game yeah. it is the more for the people especially with Panathinaikos and all I really can say right now especially in this season just not bang on them it's not helping for me of course you're frustrated as a fan team is shit uh, this is shit that shit but if you put your stuff on top as well it makes it even worse. Yeah. Of course, you don't want to watch it. Team is not playing nice. This, as a fan, of course, it it doesn't look good. But that's all you can do as a fan. Just try to help them. Yeah. And again, one of the things that we've been saying a lot this season, uh, I absolutely agree. It's uh, it's good to make an analysis and criticism, but uh, yeah, when someone's down, to yeah, keep, sometimes keep you have to do it. Yeah. yeah, sometimes you have to do it. That some some are understanding what's going on, mm -hmm. especially now. You're out of Champions League. You're out of Europa League. Yeah. You, you yeah, see, yeah. Sometimes you have to let the players feel where you went. Yeah. Normally, you play Champions League, my friend. And you go out of Europa League like this, losing from Nantes, Freiburg. Come on. No, yeah. it's unacceptable for a club this like they have to have... feel. Okay. But after that, you, you have to also find a way to stop and say, okay, we told them, we fucked them. Now go on and show better. Yeah. That's yeah. my opinion. Jose, thank you again. Um, from my no part, <laughs> from my part, I want to say that we we miss having players like you on on the team. And I think you know you you said it many times today. Like you were a team player, and from the first minute to the to the final whistle, you gave everything. And uh, we don't have enough players like that on the team now. And uh, I want to I want to say that to you as well, since you're. You're with us. Thank you for everything that you contributed to the club while you were with Olympiacos, the first in and the second in. And um, I'm really, again, super happy that we had the opportunity to talk to you and to get to know you and uh, and, and no spend problem. time with you. So, so, thank you, Shen. Um, thank you very much, and <laughs> look forward to to keeping in touch with you. And I would like to no thank you, Jose. For everything he's done for Olympiacos and the Greek national team. And I would also like to say congratulations for your amazing career at Roma and Watford as well. Yeah, it was a tough one, but I leave this all behind me and just enjoy it now. Of yeah. course, my I'm telling you, my foot still like this for playing. When I you see can... what, what players show in, I said, hey, my friend. I still can't do this. I'm telling you, I really, but for me, really, I, I hate football, how it is right now. I absolutely hate it. All this bullshit, as I said, social media stuff. Everyone is really free to allow speak about things on their social media that should not for me, it should not work it. That's the first thing. And then the BAR bullshit. It takes absolutely emotion. 
I was scoring. When we were scoring, I was like, can I celebrate or no? And it took them nearly five to ten minutes to check the goal. I mean, nah, that's that's not football for me. Nah. You can do it in this way, but you have to handle it in a different way. I mean, they have to be quicker up there. Yeah. And then send the referee again by himself to the television and they say no and the, the referee say, oh, for me, yes. I mean, what's that? Yeah. That's, that, nah, that's, that's ridiculous for me. And it totally changed, changed football for me. You rest more. In that time, you rest. Even if when it's an important game, you have to score a goal. And you check the goal, what you score to, to make a 1-1. And you have to win 2-1. And the team can rest in that 10 minutes. You know? That's... that's <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe, uh, maybe in some some time in a year or whenever we can get you back on the show. And we can talk Absolutely, about oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, why not? <laughs> why not? Ladies and gents, we're at the end of the interview with Jose Colevas. Um, for those of you that are watching, don't forget to like and subscribe. More interviews, more content coming. Uh, once more, thank you very much, Jose Colevas, for joining us and fans see you next time